more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. All right, Top Billing, back at it again. This time with a film study on your man, Liam Eichenberg, Fins Nation. Now, is Liam Eichenberg just what the doctor ordered for the Miami Dolphins, right? A surging Miami Dolphins team that we know is going to have a lights-out defense, potentially coming for that number one spot. And you know how you do it over there, man. Depth on depth on depth at all three levels. Miami Dolphins have it made on the defensive side of the ball. The offensive side of the ball has a chance to be incredible as well. The additions of Will Fuller and my man Jalen Waddle. Come on, man. What are they doing over there? That shit is hard. And you got Devontae Parker, maybe him as a second or third option. You can have something really cooking right there. Uh, We'll see what that run game is looking like. But none of that shit matters to me if you cannot protect the Samoan sniper to a Tungo Valoa. And they have a good cast of characters. Know about that? There's no doubt about that. Very young, but the addition of a guy like Liam Eikenberg, if you think about it from a it's from a logical perspective, right? You have a left-handed quarterback, so the blind side is on your right side. You insert this man at a right tackle. He's a legitimate left tackle. He's built like your prototypical exterior offensive lineman. Six foot five, three hundred and five pounds, or something like that. He's got one of those great tackle bodies Miami Dolphins usually have these bigger guys six foot five 330 something pounds you would normally find on a right side but remember so this is this is reversed now so him on that blind side move Robert Hunt down the center position people wanted them to draft Creed Humphrey and guys like that Landon Dickerson to me I want to see what Michael Dieter has they draft uh, they acquired of course Skur from the Baltimore Ravens as well so you should probably be good on that front there. The the answer's on the test at the very least, in my opinion. You got a guy on the left side like Solomon Kinley. Come on, man. Don't sleep on my boy Solomon Kinley. He is a rough neck. Uh, he will beat your ass straight up and down right there. So I want to see him get that work on the left at the left guard. And then Austin Jackson, I think, of course, is a very good talent there. So nice cast of characters. What does it mean? We shall see. It's going to be, remember, you're going to have now a a rookie uh, offensive coordinator duo, right? Guys in Studentsville. We'll see what they're about, man. Got to be about running that ball. Definitely got to be about that pass pro. The quick and mid-range game there was something that Tua Tungvaloa thrives in. We shall see. But Liam Eikenberg, man, the guy that I've known about since he was in high school, him and his brother Tommy Eikenberg, uh, the Eikenberg crew there, man, very talented guys there. Liam Eikenberg, to me, is still a work in progress. I think he's very talented. You will see some of the stuff that I'm talking about here. I think you get with the Miami Dolphins crew there. Uh, They can help hone in on some some stuff that he has to work with. But you know what? Matter of fact, man, let's go ahead and get into it, man. I love me some Liam Eikenberg. And remember, him playing at Notre Dame, you get a good judge of exactly who he is because they play that national schedule and he gets to play against like quality talent. A lot of these guys look good against nobodies. He doesn't look as good because he didn't play against nobodies. He played against a whole bunch of somebodies, and you're going to lose reps to guys who are very good as well, right? That's why they're on scholarship. You're on scholarship. And that's how I like to see it. So at least I know what somebody has to work on. You get to the NFL, you ain't played nobody, and it's a culture shock to your system, and then you look crazy. Come on, man. You already know what this kid needs to work on. So without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, love his football intelligence, his FBI. Your man is off the chain with that, right? So you're going to have a TE stunt, right? It's a multi-gap one, right? You'll have a guy, Aiden Hutchinson here, who's a potential top 10 pick in next year's draft. Uh, you have him looping all the way around right here. Then you'll have Quiddy Pay. Everybody wanted him um, in the draft. Uh, you'll have your man working on the inside right there. So it's a multi-gap approach, but they tell you, as always, block the man in front of you. Do not go for the cheese. So he's able to do that with ease there. Just worry about what's in front of him. Nope, you're not in front of me. Boom, got it. One thing, though, I want to point out about him is you'll notice. He gets very high as far as his hand placement goes, right? So he works that. Slides that inside right there, works on the redirect there, leans into it. But look how high his hands are. You don't get that good of leverage when you're that high. People can slip by you. It's just you're not with as much surface area. And he tends to do that quite a bit right there. I would like to see him get more towards the numbers. 
maybe sometimes outside the numbers, but you're talking about damn near. He's a, what's that shit? The it is uh, somebody had didn't the Undertaker have like a variation or something like that? We would pick a man up by his um by his shirt lapel or something like that. He's on that type of time with it right there. Your man needs to kind of you see it right there. He's on the outside with the right with the right one right here, but he's on the neck right here, choke slamming Aiden Hutchinson. But look, nothing nothing to it right there. This is a good pass pro right there on the redirect. Gets it in right there. Starts to sink those mud hooks in. You can see the bend right there. Real good bendability and flexibility from a natural left tackle there. Not bending over at the waist. So he keeps his man in front of him. Really good rep right there. Right here, still working against Quiddy Pay on a quick set. I like it. I like it. See right here him getting out on his kick step. Giving him... No tell Quiddy Pay is, right? No tell right here. Doesn't look like he's going to run the arc or anything. Looks like he got caught in between, but you can see right here. Now, this particular rep right here, he is bending a little bit over at the waist right there. He's has long enough arms. Quiddy Pay is not on his arm length level, <laughs> right? So he should be able to, to really sit down on that and didn't really deliver that, that first strike there. But hands still a little bit too high there, but as you can see, the raw materials are still really good. He's able to slide laterally. And then combat Quiddy Pay's misdirection there. Quiddy Pay tries to get up under him there, and he seeks those mud hooks in. On this one right here, uh, check this out. This is a very good rep. They're battling on this one. Look at that. Same kind of deal right there. He'll stop moving his feet, but you can see Quiddy Pay keeps battling right there. So he's got to learn to continue to can continue to always work, man, until the whistle right there. The initial. Uh, it's pretty pretty decent right there. Playing a little too high as far as his pad level goes right there. Needs to really sink down on, on somebody, especially against somebody like Quiddy Pay. Quiddy Pay trying to run the arc. You can see right there, he's like, nope, let's go ahead and get that in right here. So he sinks those mud hooks in. And then look at that right there. Got a man hemmed up. Like, get your ass up out this club. I don't got time for that. Quiddy Pay, man, he's like, no, I want to get on some chicks. So he keeps working, trying to get in the club. But, man, he's continuing to, sh to to shuffle laterally right there. And then it's just not that good right here. Ian Book keeping the play alive right there. And then Quiddy Pay disengages. But Book is already done. So you see him keep battling right there. He just got to work with that full intensity throughout the entire up, man. And he'd be dope. Here he is working with a little bit of a tighter technique. You got a Zizo Jolari out here. Way he pressed out past the nines with it. And you can see here, very good rep, quick set. See, what I wanted to show this is because both the hand placement and you can see his arm length here going against some of these a uh, little bit banded edge players that are 6'2 and stuff like that. See right here, he gets in his kick step, kick step phase and he sits it down. And look, Aziz Ojolari is only able to get one arm there. He's able to get both arms there. That's that length right there for you to be able to sit it down and really concentrate on the technique. But look where he has his hands placed again at the face mask. He's got to get better with that. That's going to be called to me in the NFL. that will be some hands to the face type stuff. And that's really hands to the face right there. That's what the five fingers said to the face. <laughs> but he had Aziz off kilter right there. Might gave him a little bit of a mini concussion for his troubles as well. Then the little right here. This is a little quick one right here. All right, so here we go again. This time Aziz coming out of a, a three or four point stance right here and having to combat that. Tries to give him inside move. He works really well with it. Runs that man into the traffic. So Aziz, this is a great move by Aziz. He's got a lot of people with this. His crossover move. Stick that foot in the ground. Redirects it back inside, but my man right here sits it down and then moves laterally with his feet. Keep yourself in front of the man in the basket, just like everybody with a hoops background was taught. So you got to keep yourself between your man in the basket right there. He does a great job of that. Ian Book able to get the drag route there to your boy Chase Claypool. Back at it again with Aziz Ojolari. Ooh, mud hook sunk in on him. Very good rep. Get out. You can see him looking inside out just in case there's something going on right there. Able to look inside out and then work and get into that kick step phase. Now, look. 
Hands a little bit better, right? Got it on the chest plate right there. And then he's able to sit it down, sink the mud hooks in. Aziz Ojolari unable to move him. Aziz Ojolari getting hemmed up too, looking like Martin Lawrence with that one commercial, that one character he used to play on the Martin Lawrence show, right? The karate instructor dude. He's like, look at it. Come here, punk. Come here, punk. Nope. Can't even get to it. It's a real. Then you see him really sit it down and then extend. Getting this extend on. Extend it on him right there. That's it. Ball should be out. This rep is a quick set rep here, but I'm not sure I really like this rep. Look at that. Z's driving Miss Daisy on his ass. Z, Z's got up under him. Look at that. Got up under him. Look, he has no surface area. He had to just brace for impact. He was. This was a lazy rep right here. Brace for impact. He's already leaning backwards. Look at that. Face width. Bending over at the waist. Luckily, it's a quick set, so you don't have to be super intense about it. You just got to get in the way a little bit. But you can see right here, driving Miss Daisy. Drove his ass damn near to the lap of Ian Book. But it's quick set. He's able to get the ball off. No harm, no foul there. Now, these reps are terrible. Just terrible, man. What is he doing? That's He's just lucky that was a quick set. <laughs> That's what... <laughs> Extremely lucky that was the quick game right there. Look at that. Crossover, just like Aziz Ojolari on this one, though, but he reaches. Gets lazy and reaches. You reach, I'll teach you. It's the old adage. Hoop heads know about that shit. You reach, I'll teach you. My man gets into his, his, his step phase, and then what? Gets lazy, gets beat on the inside right there. But it was a quick game work. But, man, you can see it in full speed here. Too easy. If that was a longer developing route, that's a sack. So I know I, I think some somewhere where I, they said that he didn't give up a sack. To me, I don't look at shit like that, bro. You gotta look at the you gotta look at what actually transpires right here. What is this? Joss Uche, another another guy right here, right? So Joss Uche didn't get there originally, but if you can see it, your man is absolutely destroyed on this arc runner. That's what I'm saying. You go against guys. That are NFL caliber talent just like you are, you gonna fuck up. That's just what the name of the nature of the beast is, right? That's competition for you. Anybody that's ever played knows that you're not gonna be a hundred percent right on every rep. So it's good to see shit like that. I don't like people playing against a bunch of guys that'll be uh selling um <laughs> they'll be selling car insurance and makeup at the mall or some shit like that, right? A two for one special. So you see right here. Look at that. Rip and dip. Rip and dipped his ass. What did he do? Right there on a the pivot. He pivot. He didn't even kick step out. He's immediately in FEMA mode because my man got depth on him. Josh Uche of the New England Patriots now. Look at him. In FEMA mode. Had to abandon technique. Just completely beat around. And then, of course, the quarterback steps up right here. But he gets collapsed anyway. So terrible rep. Absolutely horrific rep right there. Don't want to see that if you're a Miami Dolphins fan. So hopefully they clean up on something like that. Back against Josh Uche, who is a pure arc runner. So you can kind of see what he struggles with. Because look at this. <laughs> that was, <laughs> he didn't even get a hand up. It's like he was confused or something. Josh comes in. He shoots, he shoots originally first. He shoots just to get that inertia working. And you can see right here, my man, stiff as a diving board. Can't be stiff as a diving board. He gets into him and then just arc runs him. Nothing really to it. That that initial inertia right there made him stop moving his feet, and then Josh keeps working. Luckily, Ian Book has pretty good pocket presence there, and he's able to slide out the back door. So got to watch that. Here's a good one right here going against Quiddy Pay. Oh. Um. Pay tries to make him pay by working the speed to power. Gives him the hesitation off the dribble. Hesitation gets up on them right here and then tries to slide laterally with it. But you see right there, keeps working. Keeps working and gets on to it. You notice right when they working in the kind of in the in the combat stage, right? The chicken fighting stage, he'll get low and really sink those mud hooks in. So Oh, he does he does get there though. Pay does get there and book does flush though, but to me it's a pretty good rep just for the fact that maybe the boss should have already come out by then, but 
front face and play action fake. Pay with the one arm there. But he keeps working on this one right here. Kind of gives him half a man and gives it enough to where he can push him past Ian Book. If Ian Book were to dart out the back door and he just does that evacuation plan, evacuation plan on point. Last one right here. Hashtag real men watch to the end. Now, this is slide protection, but as you can see right here, him getting out maybe on the perimeter or something like that. I'm not sure. We have to go back more. I wanted to get the pass pro reps out. I want to probably do something a little bit later as far as the run game goes. I think he's money in the run game, but check this out right here. Oh, <laughs> come on. Down. <laughs> come on, man. Down goes Eichenberg. My man running on the slide pro. Slide pro. Pivots around and unable to get his feet up under him right there. And I was thinking maybe he clipped someone's foot, but no, not at all. Narrow, a narrow base width there, and Quiddy Pay fertilizes his ass. Spread his herb ass on the grass like fertilizer. But look at this shit. That's some, this is some bad shit right here. Look at his feet. He tries to trip him. You see that? <laughs> he tries to trip him. So I like the edge that he plays with there. Definitely has some things to work on, but I think I think he the I think for where he's at right now and where he'll be at in the future, I think he'll have a high ceiling. I think these guys will do some good work with him. So we shall see there. Not a perfect product by any stretch of the imagination. Uh him going to the second round. I thought he could be a late first round pick. Uh definitely good where he went. And he had some really good film against some really good players. So that's how I choose to look at that one right there, man, because I love competition, and the competition factor is always a big element to me in analysis, all right? But with that being said, man, make sure you support quality content. It's your boy Murph, the Underground King. You know I be giving you that heat rock, so anything that you can give is anything. We got to keep the lights on here at Top Billing so I can keep giving you that heat rock, all right? Peace. What more can I say? Top Billing. Top.